My guest says, what used to be a shameful, scary story is now my testimony of an uncaged life. Jesus from the very beginning has been good news for women. Mary DeMuth has chosen five women from the Gospels who have their own stories of transformation. And I think today we'll explore maybe one of them. The Day I Met Jesus is her new book. Former church planner in France, author, speaker, blogger, overcomer. I just added that, Mary, Thank because you. none of all this or this True. would be possible if you hadn't overcome many things. I'm going to say principally fear factor mm. very early in your life. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to that story? We can. And I was, I, I like that you use that word fear because I was so afraid growing up. I was afraid that I would die. I was afraid that people were going to chase me everywhere I went. I would have these nightmares of, of people chasing me. I was um, sexually molested as a five-year-old. Uh, there was drugs in our house. There was lots of neglect, lots of divorce. My father died when I was 10 years, old. 10 years old, so I had all this tragedy. And you had a neighbor try to poison you? Yes, we had the poison berries, that was fun. So, you know, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> and yeah, that was my story. I just felt a lot of fear growing up. And I don't know really how, other than the hand of the Lord, who must have just been there the whole time, obviously he was, I didn't know him then, but that was my story. A scared little girl who didn't know why she was on this earth. Very interesting. I think you're the one who ignited me to valedictorians. And I'm not stereotyping, <laughs> but I think it was this testimony that made me question perfectionists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that was your initial response to living with fear. You, you were going to have academic prowess, rise to the top. Yeah, and I, I birthed a bunch of perfectionists, so that was fun, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to help them not to be that way. But yeah, I figured I would look down at my feet and I would think, why did God put me on this earth? Why are these two feet occupying this square foot of land? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if I could prove myself, if I could be awesome. So some people who have tragedy, they rebel and they, you know, they go maybe the negative way, but I was rebelling the positive way, which is neither here nor there. It was my way of crying out, do you see me? Do you love me? Do you notice me? And the sad thing was, even as if I was awesome at something, it didn't necessarily get noticed. And so in that way, the, the hole in my heart just grew bigger and was um, prepared me, especially as a fatherless girl, prepared me for my heavenly father mm. later in life. I mean, the sad thing here is that the emptiness remained in junior high you were going to kill yourself. I was. I was always a writer, so I was writing suicide poetry and just thinking about what would life be like without me. Um, I was very scared to take my life, but I thought about it a lot. And thankfully, I had a counselor in junior high who just listened to me, and I think he saved my life in that sense. And then I, I just was... I was desperate for something, and by the time I was in the ninth grade, I had a friend invite me to Young Life. And yeah, Young Life. You know, this is in the testimony of a lot of people. It <laughs> yes, doesn't it always is. make it to air. Young Life, a marvelous ministry awesome. in many high schools. Yes, and so they kept telling me about Jesus, and every time I heard about Jesus, my heart would just like leap out of my chest, and I wanted to know about Jesus. I just needed to know. He had the answer to all my questions, and eventually, as a sophomore, I gave my heart to him, and I asked him at that point. Um, this time, I had my third father had left, and so I just third <laughs> father. I just prayed, you know, would you be the daddy that will never leave me? And that was. Then he came, and it was such an amazing thing, and the beginning of a very long healing journey. Well, and look what God has done yes. with this healed life. Yes. I, I love that you point out a life of secrets seldom heals. Yes. You were a prisoner with mm -hmm. all of this going on in you, afraid of death, ready to take your life, just destructive forces so at work. You identify mm -hmm. with the women mm -hmm. you've pulled together for us. I bet this was a meaningful journey for you. It was very meaningful. And I'm, I'm both a nonfiction writer and a novelist. And mm -hmm. so as a novelist, one of my jobs is to get into the skin of my characters, to walk around, in this case, as in their sandals. And so to really realize that the woman with the issue of blood was an actual human being, not a character in a book, 
but a real woman who bled for years and years and years and was unclean and lived on the outside of society, I could relate to that. I knew what it was like to be a wallflower. I knew what it was like to, to be outcasted. And so just those women of, you know, these women who had met Jesus and they had this pinprick of time where they interacted with Jesus and then everything was changed. And that, I identified with that because that's how I met Jesus. I was this big long story and then boom, I meet him and then my life is never the same. Hmm. Jesus and women, hmm. that theme alone is, is really a treasure, a treasure and uh, a wonderful exploration historically. We, we forget in this culture of liberated women, <laughs> what it was like to be a woman mm -hmm. in Jesus' day and just how he rocked the world forever because of his response to women. Yes, I mean, he was, he went way beyond anybody's expectations. He blew out all the boxes and he dignified women in such a way that just makes my heart pound. You know, he just noticed, especially that woman, you know, that was bleeding or the woman caught in adultery who was going to be killed. I mean, he just, he noticed, he dignified, he spoke words of life. He, you know, he, women, you know, met him. They were there when he was crucified. They were there when he was resurrected. He was, he included them in everything. This is so radical and so amazing. And we forget it. We forget that Jesus was a great liberator of women. All of these women had a close encounter yes. of the life-changing kind yes, absolutely. with Jesus. I wonder how many women you're meeting everywhere, home is Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. who, who perhaps have a, a warm, fuzzy feeling about Jesus, mm -hmm. but they haven't yet had that encounter. I think some of our young people, some of our children, they, they've grown up under that mantle of, right. of believing, of, of faith, but they have yet to encounter the living Jesus. That's why I wrote that book, because I just, my heart and my desire is just to see people really meet the historical, real Jesus. And, to, and when you do, your life is utterly transformed. But I think a lot of us are really content to skate along the surface and not to, you know, dig deeper. And people ask me, well, how can you be so joyful? How can you be, have this uncaged life? And, and that is because I have gone in those deep places with Jesus, and it's such a reward. But I think people are afraid to do that maybe, or they just, they have an idea about Jesus that may not be true. Mm -hmm. But my heart for them is to really look at who the historical amazing Jesus is, this irresistible savior. Dead dreams become <laughs> resurrected hope. Yes. Uh, that is the theme for all of these women, mm -hmm. five women that we, we know a lot about. Um, you, you wonderfully explore mm. possibilities we may not have considered. What did that mean for you, Mary? Dead dreams becoming resurrected hope. It was just a reminder to me that Jesus is in the business of, of take, he, he really doesn't want perfect people. He wants broken, imperfect people. And those are the ones that shine his strength. Those are the ones that let him get a word in edgewise. And I think a lot of times in our Christian culture, we want to decorate the outside and we want to appear Jesus-y. But what he wants to do is come in and transform us from the inside out. And he cannot do that with a proud person who has it all together. John Trent said, image management yeah. takes a whole lot more energy than authentic living. Amen to that. And yep. Jesus died so that we could have the real thing. The real life. Life yep. to the full. The life that is truly life. Well, this is a delight. Uh, could be a Bible study mm -hmm. because uh, each chapter... Uh, ends with a walking it out. Yep. And that's where with other women, uh, we can make this applicable, make this work in our real lives. And you're in touch with women all over the world, mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. Mary. Mm -hmm. I get your emails at <laughs> least once a week. Yes, I do write a lot. <laughs> but yes, I, I, I am in that contact with, with women and, and, and with men. And it's just amazing the emails that I get. Sometimes I get suicidal emails about people wanting to take their lives and had one of those recently and, and prayed for that woman and she didn't take her life. I'm so grateful. But I, these are the kinds of things that we encounter when we kind of step out with Jesus. We begin to see the broken people in the world and empathize with them. Well, the message is clear. Jesus has more for you wherever you are 
in your spiritual journey. And as Mary has mentioned, people who are in a desperate place mm -hmm. where you certainly have been, you know that we have prayer lines 24 seven. Please take advantage of that. Call right now, call now and, and let us encourage you and uh, inject that hope that is tied to a living hope in Jesus. And I, I just want to close. I brought what, I think this, <laughs> is this the latest email? I think so. Yeah. And uh, this is what I received from Mary. What a beautiful hug from heaven and ministry that you have. So as I say my name, I want you to put your name in this prayer. Jesus, be with Moira today. Be near, be close, show that you see. Encourage specifically, provide surprisingly, send good friends with good words, restore a broken relationship, lift the heavy weight, help us all to trust when life seems out of control and confusing. Amen. It's the kind of sister you need on your team, right? Well, the book. The Day I Met Jesus, The Revealing Diaries of Five Women from the Gospels will connect with you. I can guarantee it. It is at our e-store. Mary, thank you. God bless thank you. you. Thank Can't you. wait for next e week's email. I know. That'll be great. <laughs>